Here are over 20 premier tips and tricks, rapid fire style. We'll focus on Premiere Pro's new features and effects mixed in with some timeless tips that you probably have never heard of before. Let's jump on in. I've separated these tips into these categories down here to make this video easier to navigate and come back to. My first tip starts even before you open the software. As you open Premiere Pro, press and hold the Alt key on a PC or Option on a Mac, and then the small window will open up. This is a good place to clear your media cache alongside some other useful options. If you've been using Premiere Pro without clearing your cache, doing this will clear up a significant amount of disk space, plus it'll help Premiere Pro run a bit smoother. Just be sure not to reset your preferences. Now that we're inside of Premiere Pro, if you need to zoom into your timeline to do some quick adjustments, you can press the backslash on the keyboard to instantly return to your previous zoom level. In a recent Premiere update, Adobe added over 90 effects and transitions, but instead of grabbing them from the effects panel like usual, here's a tip. Go up to Windows and enable the Film Impact Dashboard to see all these new effects and a preview of them before applying them to your timeline. If you have a graphic element with a white or black background, you can add the alpha effect to it to immediately remove the background. This even works on those fake PNGs with those checkered alpha backgrounds as well. If the result isn't good right off the bat, go to Effect Controls and change this option to Not Fully Automated and manually adjust these settings to get a good result. It's important to note that this effect will not work well when the object in the foreground is white and the background is mainly white. So case by case. Normally, if I want to make a crop with rounded corners, I would have to create a mask underneath opacity here and then expand it. But the main problem with this method though, is that when you add effects like drop shadow to it, it won't appear on the border unless you nest it first. So there's a new way. You can use the rounded crop effect and it does exactly what you expect and more. We can keyframe the offset parameter to create this little animation. And there's also an option to invert the crop and an option to automatically zoom in on the footage as you crop to make sure it fits the whole frame. Making custom camera shakes have never been easier. Just use the camera shake effect or the wiggle effect and in effect controls, we have all these settings to customize the shakes to our liking. I also love that there's this master parameter so we can keyframe the overall shake amount. It's important to note that the camera shake effect works best on full screen footage, since it will automatically scale up the footage for us to avoid black edges. The wiggle effect, however, is best used on graphic elements. And some good news, after all these years, we now have new blur effects inside of Premiere. You can add the focus blur effect to any clip and get instant blur and masking combos. You can fully customize the blur area and top it off with some chromatic aberration. We can also change the focus type to tilt shift to create that miniature world effect. Bokeh Blur Effect has all the settings you need to create a really awesome bokeh blur. And if you use Premiere's object mask to cut out our subject, we can apply bokeh effect to the background to get that shallow depth of field look. An extra tip that I learned from a comment on my object masking video is if I wanna select only a part of the subject, I can just draw around the area with the object mask tool. And then I can hold Alt or Option on a Mac to draw around the areas I want left out. Thanks for commenting that. And we have a new mosaic effect. But how is it more useful than the one that we've had for ages? Well, the new one has a lot more controls as you can see here. And if we use this handy surprise me button, which will randomize the parameters, we'll get a bunch of cool results that could never be done with the original one. And as a side note, if you haven't noticed already, all of the new effects in Premiere Pro come with the surprise me button, which is really handy if you're just looking for some quick inspiration. The compound blur effect will let you use the luminance of another video as a mask for the blur. For example, I had this smoke video under my footage. Let's add the compound blur to the footage and pick the video layer with the smoke clip as the blur layer. And check this out. 
we can create some pretty interesting results depending on what we add to the blur layer. But did you know that Premiere always had the ability to mask an effect with another video layer? I have my logo on top of this footage in the timeline. Let's add an adjustment layer in between these two layers. Here I can add any effects I want like Lumetri color and Let's end with the track matte key effect. Here's where I can choose video layer three and my color adjustments will only affect the area of my logo. You can change matte alpha to matte luma if you want to use the bright areas of the footage as a mask instead of the transparency. And actually, instead of using the footage, we can delete this and use these tools to draw our own shape to use as the mask. I'm telling you, don't sleep on the track mat key effect. And here are some must know tips from our sponsor, Artlist. If all the effects in Premiere Pro are not enough for you, Artlist has us covered with even more effects like super glow, heat distortions, fire effects, cartoon effects, and many more powerful effects. We can simply drag and drop it on our footage and done. Or maybe you have enough effects. And in that case, Artlist has top quality assets for you from story driven stock footage to graphic templates to LUTs, even sound effects and music, which now has this search by song feature. It has pretty much everything you need as a video editor. The next tip is to visualize your ideas or generate assets fast with Artlist's image and video generation tools. And this lets us use the best AI in the business from VO 3.1, Sora 2 Pro, and more all in one place. We can create videos from text or images, and the results also come with sound. It's meow time. Or you can generate your own voiceover in over 21 different languages using one of their mini speaker voice options. Or you can also clone your voice as well. It's Gal's voice clone. How you doing? This is seriously one of the best voice clones I've heard of my voice. And Artlist knows that everybody has a different workflow and that's why they created multiple plans for you to choose from. All the plans come with unlimited downloads. So grab as much as you want. If you use my link below to sign up, you get two extra months free when you sign up for an annual plan. Thanks so much to Artlist for sponsoring and now let's show you even more tips in Premiere. Here are some cool effects that you can create with just a few clicks, like God Rays. Drop the volumetric rays effect to your footage. We can bump up the intensity to brighten up the rays. Then we can change the highlights only parameter to get rid of or bring in more bright spots from the footage into this effect. With the volumetric rays effect selected in effect controls, in the program window, we can move this little blue circle to change the light's direction. If you want God rays to come only out of a specific area of the footage, I recommend duplicating the footage and removing the effect from the bottom layer. On the top video layer, we can add a crop effect before volumetric rays and crop out any part that you don't want. Then we can lower the source opacity to zero, and now our top layer only has the God Ray visible. Then we can change the blending mode of this layer to add or screen, whichever one fits your footage better, and there we go. The glint effect will instantly add glint to the bright spots of your footage, and you can adjust the looks of it as you please from shape to color. We can bump up the shimmer area and speed for some continuous animation. The next tip is how to quickly create a background pattern. Here I have a solid color layer and my logo on top. First, make sure that the logo layer is big enough to cover the whole frame. Then we can add the clone effect to it. At first, we don't see much change, and that's because our logo is too big. But no worries, from clone effects, we can apply prescale and then scale down our logo before it gets cloned. Now we can click the surprise me button a few times to find a pattern that we like. We can also come down to adding more clones manually and even turn this into an animating background automatically just by changing the animation mode to continuous. And after adding some glow and some noise, this is what we get. That was a lot of tips to take in. Let's take a moment to relax. If anyone else has a tip you would like to share, drop a comment 
down below. Talking about animation without keyframes, here are a few ways that you can do it. If you're doing an educational video, for example, and you want to cut to a paper background to do some more explaining, try using the page peel transition to transition into that new segment. You can drag the transition in the timeline in or out to make the animation slower or faster. And don't forget to use that surprise me button to try out new possibilities. Are you working on a scene where you're adding footage to an old TV? Use the TV power transition to help sell the effect, or maybe the VHS damage impact. And of course, these effects are fully customizable like all the new effects inside of Premiere. Are you tired of having static text inside of your project? You can try adding the text animator effect and see what you get. And like most of these new effects, we can adjust the animation curves to really dial in on the speed of the animation. But if you run into a problem where this effect isn't animating each letter separately, that's usually because the letters are too close to each other, or maybe because you added a stroke or a drop shadow, the only workaround for now is to increase the tracking to separate each letter a little bit more. And now the letters aren't stuck together anymore. If instead of static text, you have a static logo or a graphic, try using the shape flow transition. Here's a quick tip to quickly try out different animations. Select the logo and press the forward slash to set in and out points and press this button here in the program window to enable loop playback. If you don't see this button, drag it in from the plus menu here. Now we can hit play and let the playback loop. And each time it loops, we can press the surprise me button to test out a bunch of different animation styles. As for my last tip, I recommend that you check out all the effects in the motion effects tab and the animation tab because all these are made to create instant animation with motion blur. This tab is focused on in and out animations to be applied to the start or the end of your clip. As for motion effects, these are more for continuous animations. They all look kind of simple on their own, but the true power comes when you combine them. For example, on my text with the text animator effect already applied, I could also add the grow effect or the shrink effect on top to instantly get the text to scale up or down without having to do any keyframing. And for anyone who watches to the end, thank you. Here's an extra tip for you. So once you're done with a project, we can go up to edit and click on remove unused. And this will remove any assets that aren't used in our final timeline. So that way our project panel is nice and tidy, especially if you need to send this project file off to somebody else it saves you space. If any of these tips helped you out today, be sure to give that like button a gentle tap. And if these tips were not enough, be sure to check out this other video over here where you can learn more effects inside of Premiere. That's all for today's video. Thanks so much for watching. And as always, keep creating better video with Gal. Oh, I can't reach the lens. Whew.